Galatians 5 is a verse that we all know, we've all heard, it's been preached on so many times. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, if we live in the Spirit, that's what we're going to be talking about, let us also walk in the Spirit, trust in the Spirit, so that God can do in our lives what only He can do. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you for everything that we've been able to enjoy this morning. Uh, the things that we uh, have talked about our country and the freedoms that we have in our country. And um, we do pray your blessings upon our country, upon America. And for all those that uh, you ask us to pray for, those in government and the national government, the, our state and our local governments, for those that protect us, uh, our policemen, we thank you for our firemen, our first responders. We thank you for all of those who uh, do so very much, and we are very grateful that they're there. But Lord, we know you are high and lifted up, sitting on the throne of glory. And Lord, uh, we, we pray blessings from you first and foremost. All is vain if you don't bless. And Lord, we've gathered together today in your name. Sir, we ask your blessings upon your word. Speak to us. We're not going to be so presumptuous to think that we can do life well without you. Many try, many try, and I think they're deceived by the ruler of the rulers, the ruler of the prince of the power of the air, those that uh, are tied to darkness. Lord, let us be freed from those things so that we can serve you in spirit and in truth. Jesus, may you be high and lifted up. And sir, we ask you to send your spirit to overflow not just be here, but to be in charge. May your will be done for your honor and glory alone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2 is a very well-known scripture. And you he has made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. All of us were born with a sinful nature. And because of that sinful nature, all of us lived a life only thinking about ourselves, wanting the things for ourselves, He says in verse 2, in which he once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Let us be clear. Satan sinned. And his sin spread. Satan went to the Garden of Eden, to go after God's created humans, Adam and Eve, and they also fell into the lie. Because of that, we have lived in that same lie. We were born in sin and we needed redemption. Have you ever thought about God's greater kingdom? All the stars and beautiful stars that are out there, more than we can count. Scientists tell us today that in our own little Milky Way, the own little galaxy that we live in, uh, there are hundreds of millions of stars. It's amazing. But then when they go beyond that, they tell us that, that though, though and, and I'm not going to get into the big numbers, but when you start thinking about speed of 186,000 miles per second, that's a light year. And they start talking about moving from one side of our little Milky Way to the other side of the Milky Way. We take hundreds of thousands of light years. That's just one galaxy. But then they say that there are hundreds of millions of galaxies. Some say billions. And that's just as far as we can see. It's kind of, in my opinion, <clears throat> almost like Christopher Columbus when he, he took off and he was going to the New World and, and all of the scholars said, oh, no, no, you're going to get to a certain point and it's just going to stop and you're just going to fall off this side of the earth. Well, we found out that didn't work. And when we think of God, 
the eternal, infinite God. Sometimes we think of a, that he's in the heavens, and we think of the first heaven. That's where the clouds are, the birds fly, delta goes over. Amen? There's the second heaven, the stars, the galaxies, and all. But then there's the third heaven that talks about the presence of God. And sometimes we think, well, it's just a finite place. Is it? I wonder if the galaxies go on in infinity. I wonder if they too, like our God, have no end. We do know some of the creations of God. The Bible doesn't tell us everything about all of heaven. It just tells us what we need to know. It doesn't tell us everything that God knows, but it's everything we need to know. And it tells us that there were angels, innumerable. That's more than I can count. Innumerable. And it tells us even then that like Satan, one-third of the angels of the creation of God, they fell into that same lie. The lie is that they could depend upon themselves. That they could be in charge of their life that they knew better and they could do better. And that was sin because it was not trusting and believing and, and falling in allegiance and, and in need of a holy God who could sustain. Even they did not realize, but they could not even take a breath without the Almighty God's ever graceful hand. But we know that was sin. And we know that they were separated from God because of that sin. And those fallen angels, we call them demons. They have many names. And they feel what it is like to live without the touch of God. And they are in anger, in frustration, and in pain. I've often wondered if they miss the presence of God. I've often wondered, because of the mistake of trusting in themselves, what pride did to them. If they wished that they had peace once again, wouldn't that be the definition of hell? To live with no love, no joy, no peace, no patience, no kindness, no goodness, no faithfulness, no gentleness, no self-control? That would be a terrible way to live. Yet God, in his love and in his life, came to give that type of life for us. And yet in the world today, we see so much brokenness, don't we? So many people are stumbling in their sin, led by the pride piper. I don't call him the Pied Piper, I call him the Pride Piper. And they just fall right in line with him and, and they go on to say, I'm self-reliant, I, I, I'll do what I want. You talk to them about their life and they'll say, I'm okay. I was thinking in Sunday school today, I've been a Christian for over 52 years and I will tell you, I can't say my life's okay, not outside of Christ. Christ made a difference. Christ made a difference. Now, our natural reaction to sin in our life is that when you know that you've done wrong, is we'll just say, well, I'll just quit. Y'all ever done that? I won't ever do that again. I used to work with addicts. I'll never take another drink. I'll never do another drug. I'll never gamble again. I'll never lie again. I'll never stretch the truth again. Sounds like politicians, doesn't it? <clears throat> oh my goodness, I shouldn't have said that. There's good politicians out there. We just keep hunting them, don't we? Forgive me. We all think we can control. How many of you know you can't? Rick was saying at the beginning of the year, he said, I'm not making any more New Year's resolutions. Why? Because he knew he was going to break them. So I just won't do it. I'll quit it. I won't ever do that again. That's works. That's self-effort. 
That doesn't work, folks. If you go to a factory and you want to um, produce a product, you will get everything together and, and you will produce by work. It, it will turn out a product, whatever that product is. But a machine cannot bring forth fruit. Fruit comes from life. It is produced by life, and it is sustained by life. John 15 says we're supposed to abide in the vine. Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. If we're cut off from the vine, we can do nothing. We will be dead. We will be of no use other than to wither up and to be burned in the fire. We can't produce life, but if we are plugged into the one who produces life, that life-giving flow, listen to me now, the Spirit of God living within us, all we have to do is be connected and let the Spirit flow through us, and He will produce fruit. We're just fruit hangers. So easy, but yet, we still act as if we can produce in our life what we're supposed to do. We're in charge, and we like it. We like to make decisions. We're all control freaks. You've heard me say that. Control is an illusion. You've heard me say that. But yet we still follow our own wisdom, our own way, but the Scripture tells us in Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit, the life-producing fruit that God produces in us, relying upon Him, really there's only one fruit. Now, you say, preacher, you, you, you just read to us nine. Yes, I did. I read to you nine fruits of the Spirit. But how many of you know there are more fruits than that? If we were going to talk about the attributes of God, could we come up with a hundred? Could we come up with a thousand? I mean, if we had time to think about it, when we step into heaven, one nanosecond into heaven, we're going to be, number one, we'll have a greater comprehension. We'll have a new way of thinking. And when we see the glory of God in that place, we'll unfathomable will be the grace of the glory of God that will, it's, He will open up the treasures of all that is good, everything that is good, and we will be the full beneficiaries of it. But yet in this life, we think we can control and manipulate those things other than just abiding in the one who can. There's really only one fruit, and it is love. Because when I was dead in my trespasses and sins, it was God's great love that saved me. I don't understand why God would leave all that to come here, to put up with all this, to be treated the way that he was, other than his love. And yet when I, I was 10 years old. <clears throat> some get saved younger, some get saved later. I really personally believe that that you can have a full appreciation of God no matter what age you got saved. But I think some of us, some people who, who have lived longer and have sinned more, when they find the grace of God, they have a little bit of a greater appreciation for it. Don't you? Love. is so wonderful. Everything we, knew, we need in every situation can be changed by God's amazing love. Christ in you, the hope of glory. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16 says this. You ready? God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Let me read that again. God is love. He who abides in love abides in God and God in him. I can't produce the fruit, but the Spirit of God will produce it in me. So as I'm living, 
I just have to live and trust and ask and repent when I don't do it. And what I need to do is let God's spirit of love flow in me. Not my spirit, his spirit. In every action of our day, every outgrowth of the spirit of life should flow through us. Let's talk about these real quick. This is the fruit. Number one is agape, love. That's the number one. Now let me remind you, agape means to cherish. It means to cherish in such a, a, an amazing way that it totally absorbs you. Nothing else. Once you find that love, you will give everything to receive that love. When I was dating my wife, I went from like to be fond of to, hey, I thought she was cute. I chased after her. I literally did. You can ask her. I ran through a parking lot. I didn't run. I walked real quick through a parking lot. Interrupted a conversation just to get a date. And it worked. And the more that I got to know her, the more I knew that she was different from anybody else that I'd ever dated. And I dated quite a bit. And when I found that one, I didn't want to turn loose of it. So about two weeks into this dating relationship, I said, wow, this is the one. So I went and got a ring. 23 days after we started dating, I said, would you be mine? And for some crazy reason, she said yes. Now, I will tell you that through times, it hadn't always been easy. She had to put up with me. From times, we would go through... You know, she never threw a pan at me, but I think she tried a few times. There's times she didn't want to talk to me. There was times that she would just, I mean, and times I was just mad enough to spit. But through it all, that love has grown in greater appreciation to after 36 years, I love her more than I ever have. I appreciate her more than I ever have. And I would do anything for that woman. Now, y'all don't tell her. She'll take advantage of it. But I would do anything for her. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I cherish her. She means more than anything other than Christ to me. And it grows. When you love agape, you place yourself under them. They take the top seat when Christ came for us, He loved us. He did agape. So He went under us to serve us. He paid for our sins. He took a beating I deserved. He went through unfathomable. The one who had never done wrong paid for my wrong. And when He paid for it, it came with an eternal guarantee. So I never had to lose that love. But because God continued to produce that love in me, it gets better and better and better. And I appreciate it even more. I, I said this in Sunday school this morning. It, this is not the way that it works. But if, if someone died and they spent five minutes in hell... Now, really, there's no time there. I'm just trying to put it into a frame of reference that we could understand. If we spent a short moment in hell and everything that hell represents, which is the opposite of the full nature of God. Y'all listening? And yet Jesus came down to them, opened the doors, called us by name and said, get out of this place. You're coming home with me. And you went back to the glorious, golden, perfect streets of glory. How would you feel then? Brother Mark, do you think this, the hymns of praise would be a little louder? A little bit more heartfelt? Now, I know when I get to glory, I'm going 
Uh, and by the way, what I just said, that's not the way that it works. If you're saved, absent from the body, present with the Lord. You say goodbye to this world, you open your eyes to that world. You step out of the anger of this world, the brokenness of this world. But though Christ in me is perfect, he will take me to the perfect place. Amen? But please understand, I don't think that we understand and appreciate what Christ did for us. And if we did, and we knew that it was everything that God did for us, not any works of our own, but this love that, that God, I'm being able to live in and understand and appreciate and want more of is being produced in me by His Spirit. Though He is now in heaven at the right hand of the Father, listening to prayers, answering prayers, waiting for someone to come to their senses and say yes to the wooing of the Holy Spirit and come into their life and save them and He could, he could let the blood be applied and the name to be written in the Lamb's book of life and everything would be settled for that person he's doing exactly what he needs to do right now but while he's there the spirit is here and it urges and it begs and it completes it's like he gets the spigot and it, he he connects it to the throne and the spirit takes it down and plugs it into us so there can be a direct flow of all the good spirit all the goodness of God that can flow directly into us. Y'all ever get out of energy? Y'all need to recharge? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Somebody give me the definition of all things. All things. What does that mean? All things. Is everything? Anything? Does anybody in here like all things? I can do through Christ who has sent his spirit into our life. Joy. Anybody need a cup of joy today? Do we live in a place that's kind of lost their joy? Do we live in a brokenness where people are hungry for more? Peace. Connected with God, connected with each other, no hindrances, no brokenness. Everything is one. One heart, one accord. Nothing as bad as being mad at somebody or somebody being mad at you and that heartfelt pain. I have never heard the words from my wife, I no longer want to be with you. And I am sorry for all of you that have heard that. I could only imagine the pain. I could only imagine. But I tell you one thing, you'll never hear it from God. I've always said Humpty Dumpty was pushed. And all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty back together again, but Jesus could make him whole and give him peace and give him purpose and give him meaning. Patience. Anybody need patience? That could be described as long-suffering. Patience is the word that has to do with things, circumstances. Long-suffering has to do with people. You suffer long with people. Anybody had to suffer long because of somebody else? Anybody need patience, which means to remain peaceful and full of joy though you are being treated ill being lied about gossiped about torn apart throwing bombs at you treated you like you were dirt yet in that moment you have to remain in the moment and by the way all of you who want to get mad and give it back to them that's not the way Jesus said it well, I'll stand up for myself. Oh, really? Why don't you let Jesus who stood up for you stand up for them and handle it? Can you handle it? Oh, we act like we can. You ever got mad at somebody? Or excuse me, let me say this backwards. Somebody got mad at you and they withdrew their love from you. They wouldn't talk to you. Wouldn't answer your calls. Wouldn't come to the door when you came in to talk to them because they were punishing you 
because you had done something to them that they didn't like, and they felt like they had the right to punish you. They had the right to withhold their love from you. Aren't you glad God never did that to us? And if it's the Spirit that's in control of your life, it's the Spirit that's energizing, you're going to act like Him. It's going to be His life flowing through you. Now, you might be so brazen. You might be so bold to say, but, but Pastor, I'm going to do it my way. i got more to say about that in just a moment. Kindness follows patience. Being kind, a sweet word at the hard times. Sometimes the greatest thing that you can do is keep your mouth shut. Sometimes a hug will do. Sometimes just being there. But sometimes trying to encourage, it makes all the difference. Goodness. We need a whole lot more of good in this world, don't we? You know, the politicians are always talking about all the good they're going to do. Unless they're getting their wisdom and their power and their love from God, it's not going to work. You can have all this world and it be vanity of vanities. All is vanities. All is broken. All is falling apart. Faithfulness. Anybody need to be faithful? Anybody like to get up tomorrow morning and not make a mistake? Well, you're going to need God's help to do that. Gentleness, meekness, strength of their control. Not under your control, but under His control. And that leads us to the last one, self-control. That's saying yes to the Holy Spirit. He wants to produce Christ in our lives. He really does. Our Lord had a disciple, the most educated disciple that he had. He was the only disciple that could speak more than one language. His name was Judas Iscariot. Do y'all know the end result? He saw what was going on. And he sold out our Lord for how much? 30 pieces of silver, the price of a slave. Because things didn't go the way he wanted. He relied on his own wisdom. He saw the, all the terror and the turmoil. He saw how, what the, he could read what was the writing on the wall. He knew, he heard Jesus say, they will kill me. They will crucify me. And he made a deal. He was acting out of his own understanding, his own, I'm going to be in control of this, his own wisdom, his own guidance, his own thoughts, his own feelings at this moment. All I want to say to you is, I don't want to follow the path of Judas Iscariot. It was said better if he had never been born than to follow the path of Judas Iscariot, following the wisdom and the understanding of this world. And yet, we rely so much in our wisdom and our thoughts. All I can tell you is, I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know the answers to all the questions. I can't help the ones that are going through brokenness and pain, but I know the one who does. And it's not what I can do. I can, I can be like that machine and go out and produce works, but all that's vanity of vanity. What we need is the Spirit of God living within us, guiding us, controlling us, producing in us that which is Christ. And everyone who knows Christ has been commanded and has been given the ability to do exactly that. 
If you say, I can't, you're literally saying, he can't. But he can do all things, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. You know, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit for a few weeks now, and I'm not sure, I'm not sure that we all don't need to spend five minutes in hell so that we could have a greater appreciation for what God is doing. I don't want to go to hell. I want to know in whom I believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him until the day that I see him. As long as we're in control, we have no hope. Church, we are to be the microcosm of the picture of the love of God to this world. But as long as we're doing it, that's all we're going to see. They're going to not going to see any difference between us and anybody else. What we need is the love of God. If you're hungry for the Word of God, the love of God, I hope you open up your heart and let Him in. And if there's anybody here that doesn't know Jesus, if you die without knowing Jesus, you will go to that place called hell, not for five minutes, but for all of eternity. Please don't go there.